Dr. Doreen Grand is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Dr. Doreen Grand is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Uh, we do have somebody who's written in and said, my son is six years old, autistic, and was just diagnosed with type 1 diabetes two weeks ago. Uh, he also has anxiety. Is there any resource that I can get for my son? I don't feel comfortable leaving him with anybody, anyone but a nurse. Send in yeah. her a hug, right? Virtual hugs. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a tough one. I mean, you have a lot of things going on. What I would do is I would probably try to stabilize. I do two things at the same time. I would try to get a team of people to support me, first of all. Like I always say, and I know it's easier said than done, but it's super important if you just get temporary help. Uh, if you can get maybe, you know, cousins, brothers, sisters, or family members to come in and just assist for a month, let's say. They don't have to be there all the time. They just need to give you a little bit of support so that you are not the prime only caretaker, right? Um, you you kind of try to build your team so that you have some help. Um, I would get the diabetes under control first, and I would make sure that whoever is in my child's life is trained to deal with the diabetes. I and mean, that's the only that was that would be my first priority. Uh, is to make sure that everyone is uh, able to deal with whatever, if, if there's uh, injections that need to be given or if there's something they need to deal with, uh, should he, uh, you know, have any other type of like a seizure or anything. You just want to make sure everyone is trained to deal with the diabetes, okay? So that is your primary goal. Um, in terms of anxiety, there's a lot of things you can do to help anxiety. That would, once I have the, a plan of action for the diabetes and I start putting that into place, I'll focus on the anxiety. And with anxiety, there's a lot of things. Like, as I said, one of the things is a visual schedule of the day. And now, again, I don't know your child. Sometimes our kids can read. Sometimes our kids are very communicative, so you can just tell them. But a lot of times it's helpful to have a visual schedule. So what that would look like is, for instance, you know, a picture of the child waking up, then a picture of what they want. They Let them choose, let them choose uh, what their breakfast will be. So you can like the previous night, the child can choose tomorrow I'm having this, then put the picture of that breakfast. Then if there's a person coming in the house that who's gonna work with them, uh, hopefully you are able to get a team of behavior analysts or behavior technicians or, you know, filling the child's day with various types of teachers or instructors. And you put those pictures in. So, you know, after breakfast, we're going to do two hours of this kind of activity. And then we're going to have a snack. And then we're going to have, I don't know, we're going to go uh, to do read something or do class time whatever the schedule is all the way through until they uh, go to bed. And that really, really helps because then what you do is in every day, you, as the activities change, you will first go over to the child and kind of point out. And the child will get the idea that if they don't know what's happening, they can go to their little schedule and they can see what the day is going to look like. That's a big anxiety reduction tool is just letting the child know what's happening that day. There's other things you can do, of course. A lot of times, and again, because I don't know your child, I apologize, it might not relate, but a lot of times our children have anxiety because of their senses and because of uh, sensory input. Shannon, as you know, a lot of our kids have uh, they over they react to visual uh, sensory input or auditory. Auditory is a big one for children who uh, are terrified of the sound of, let's say, a vacuum cleaner, or they hear things that we don't even hear, like a truck down the streets or so on. And this type of like uh, continual like uh, shattering sounds that are shattering to them might sound very normal to us. 
uh, and it, it could be anything, you guys. Like I remember one of my kids telling me the most uh, uh, prominent sound and disturbing sound to him was doors opening and closing. You know, it could be anything. So sensory input is a very important one. And I would make sure to give my child a quiet area, a quiet zone. For instance, a little corner where you can put a bean bag. Uh, bean bags are great because when the child sits in there, they get kind of a sensory, uh, they feel like they're surrounded and that gives them a sense of safety um, and maybe uh, noise canceling headphones uh, where they can put those on and just relax in their bean bag, maybe look at a book they want to look at. Uh, maybe listen to music that they that is very calming that they enjoy um, some some area which belongs to the child and and is a place where the child can take breaks and you will use that all the time trust me whenever you see signs of anxiety developing and the child will start to get to the point where they will use that they'll just go there on their own so that is a, that's another thing and then, of course, once you have a little bit of a routine going for the anxiety, now you need to deal with the symptoms of autism, right? And this, that all has to do with teaching of skills that are delayed. Um, and so that's really when I think if you can get a team of uh, people together who are uh, either trained or will be willing to be trained, um, to work on all the skills that your child might need or not have enough of, be deficient in. And, you know, if you are able to, to have an ABA organization work with your child, great, because they'll provide the team. If you're not, or if you're in a country where that sort of thing doesn't exist yet, then all you have to do is essentially get your a team, the a group of people, you can either ask family members, volunteers, or actually hire students, and they can all get trained. Um, and then of course, Shannon, this is the opportunity to, to tell our viewers, um, our training, all of our training that I developed over the years, many people at CARD developed over the years, are on uh, our, our uh, website called Institute for Behavioral Training. IBT, what is it? IBT.org, right? Or IBT.org, yeah. Yes, IBehavioralTraining.org. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.